Hi, today I'm going to be talking about Fuji's 55 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. Yep, the Fujinon FX 55 to 200 mil. Equivalent focal length in full frame terms, 83 to 300. It's a really good range to have, very useful. Now I've had this lens for very nearly two and a half years. In fact, virtually the same time as I bought the actual camera body. This lens, very deep lens hood, Filter thread 62mm, it's optically stabilised down to about four and a half stops, which I've found absolutely fantastic because I do an awful lot of filming with this, let alone still photography, but mostly filming. Because in the last year or so, I've become an amateur wildlife photographer and I'm out and belt with this lens on me all the time. Hence why I've also got a strap on the camera because it's around my neck and I'm ready as I go out the door, backpack on with other lenses in and maybe a spare body. I'm off down the lane and I'm ready for anything, basically. What can we say about this lens, how sharp it is? I've just got a new lens test chart, by the way, and I thought, I'll put some of my lenses through it. I'm not really a pixel peeper, but you know, sometimes it's nice to know. But if you've read all the reviews on this lens, and there's been many, many reviews on YouTube, social media, etc., and publications that definitely endorse the fact that this lens is really, really sharp, right through the range. As I say about the stabilization, if you're not using it and you're filming with it, especially the 200 mil end, right? Equivalent to 300 mil, an old money as it were. Um, you'll notice it, it'll be very shaky, the results. But as soon as you've got that switched on, the OIS, and I keep it on all the time, except when it's on a tripod. But I, I often forget, I leave it on all the time. <laughs> and I keep a UV on it most of the time, protects the element, if nothing else. Essential for that, since I've damaged lens elements in the past stupidly over the last 33, 34 years of my professional career. Let's see how good it is. And I'm going to show you a lot of video and also a lot of still images that will just extol the virtues of this lens. Starting with stills, I grabbed this image of a crescent moon a few minutes after falling out of bed. Right time, right place on a misty morning with the sun cutting through. And this was at F14, I believe, hence the starburst. A sudden thrashing of water and wings alerted me to the takeoff of these swans. I happened to be looking in the wrong direction at the time. I just kept shooting and zooming in from around 75mm to 200mm. This is just a dozen of the shots that were taken as they became airborne. With wildlife in particular, I'm finding that most shots are at the 200mm end of the zoom. Yes, if I could afford it, I'd get the Fuji FX 100-400 lens. I know it's a superb optic, but it's also very expensive. Still, I may rent it sometime, give it a whiz. I rely on autofocus quite a lot too, and most of the time, it's bang on. Okay, let's go to the movies. Yeah, can't wait for that. I mostly shoot 4K at 50 frames per second. That allows me to slow it down for a bit of slow-mo, but also I can crop in by at least 100% without losing hardly any quality at all. Focus tracking was used with these cyclists with the lens at 200mm. Anyway, every video clip you see here was shot handheld with the image stabilisation on. I'll also shoot slow-mo and usually at about 100 frames per second. Again, that allows me to slow it down even more in Final Cut Pro, which I use to edit. And uh, if you use optical flow too, you can go right down 10, 15%. So you can get some really good slow-mo. The only issue when shooting slow-mo at 100 frames per second, for example, is that no audio is recorded. And on the X-T3, it's at 1080p only. So mostly everything is shot at 4K, 50 frames per second. This heron was filmed at the 200mm end and 50 frames per second, 4K, but not cropped. So, while I'm out here documenting my local area, this is the lens I'm mostly using, to be honest, to capture wildlife. But brilliant for filming wildlife. I would say probably 80 to 90% of the photography and filming I've been doing around here, my local area, has been with this lens. But I could do with a bit more range. However, I'm after Fuji's 70 to 300. Then it'll have to go, sadly. And uh, I know a certain lens that's coming out soon. And so, since lockdown, I find myself now photographing, well, filming, 
birds most of the time. <laughs> used to be landscape photography and now it's the uh, 55 200 on the Fuji that I'm mostly using. And uh, it's a great little lens, but boy, as I said earlier, I may have said earlier, I'm after the uh, new 70 to 300 by Fuji. Oh yes, <laughs> I'm gonna flog this and get that. <laughs> and this certain lens is a 70 to 300, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. But <laughs> I'm definitely gonna get that lens because it'll get me in 50% closer to the wildlife that I'm now currently shooting. Wife says I've got to sell this first, it's got to go <laughs> before I can find a new lens. <laughs> you, know, you have to listen to the missus occasionally, don't you? Ah, dear. Anyway, fantastic lens, highly recommended guys. Rush out and buy one. <laughs> don't buy the 70 to 300, so be out of stock. I'll never be able to get hold of one, will I? <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so I have fun with it. Yeah, so that's it. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.